good afternoon people welcome back today uh, already we have discussed two lectures on electric potential and capacitance that's chapter number 2 and in those two lectures we have dealt with uh, work done that is electrostatic potential energy uh, that is work done for charge q then we've also seen work done for unit positive charge we called it electric potential then we have also seen potential difference then we saw electric potential due to a single charge due to a dipole due to a shell we have also seen equipotential surfaces a surface where all the points have the same value of potential is called an equipotential surface now in this particular lecture i am going to deal with numericals which numericals i am going to deal with i am going to look at numericals one unsolved numericals from the textbook 1 2 3 4 i'm going to also look at additional as we always usually look at additional also additional exercises numerical 12 13 14 20 22 and 36 so let us start up uh numerical 2.1 on your screens right now it says there are two charges q1 5 into 10 raised to minus 8 coulomb q2 minus 3 into 10 raised to minus 8 coulomb they are placed 16 cm apart and you have been asked to find those points where the net electric potential is zero so this is our keyword the net electric potential has to be zero now where are those points going to be let's move on uh, let me draw those two charges uh these are the two charges this is q1 this is q2 and the distance between them is 16 cm now uh, q1 is 5 into 10 raised to minus 8 and q2 is minus 3 into 10 raised to minus 8 now some of you all might realize that this is a system where one is positive the other is negative so a point where the net force is zero or the net electric field is zero will lie outside the system but that was field and force those are vector quantities we are talking about electric potential which is a scalar quantity so the rules change let us consider this point a here this point is at a distance of x from here so this is going to be 16 minus x so consider point a as a point where net electric potential is zero so at that point net electric potential is going to be zero so v at a is now how many charges contribute to the electric potential there are two charges q1 and q2 so va will be v1 plus v2 we know v1 kq1 by r1 v2 kq2 by r2 but va is how much zero we'll take k common and it goes below zero so this is zero so this is q1 by r1 plus q2 by r2 i think we'll put up values now so how much is q1 that's 5 into 10 raised to minus 8 and how far is q1 from point a isn't it x and how far is q2 from point a 16 minus x so this is going to be x plus how much is q2 minus 3 into 10 raised to minus 8 the whole over 16 minus x so let's move on as easy as it looks a beautiful calculative idea so this is 3 you see 3 went from here so it became plus 10 is to minus 8 also goes away so let's cross multiply 16 fives are is 80 minus 5x is 3x which brings us to 80 is 8x or finally what do you land up with so x is equal to 10 cm from q1 but as i said rules change this is not the only point where the potential is zero there is another point also this is something like this let us consider this is q1 this is q2 
and let us consider this point B. Let us say this is Y from here. So consider another point B where net electric potential is zero. Oh wow, therefore VB is again V1 plus V2. No difference at all in the treatment. Same sort of treatment. VB considering again zero. KK goes away. So Q1 by R1 plus Q2 by R2. Now, how much is Q1? We know Q1 as 5 into 10 raised to minus 8. How far is Q1 from point B? Isn't it 16 plus Y? So this is going to be 16 plus Y plus this is minus 3 into 10 raised to minus 8. And how far is Q2 from B? This is Y. So Y. And the treatment remains same. 10 raised to minus 8 again goes away. Over 16 plus Y is 3 over Y. Take it here and take it there. So 5y is 16 3 is our 48 plus 3y. 5y minus 3y is uh, 2, I guess. Yes, that's it. 2y. And 2y is 48. So y is going to be 24. So let me write it here. So y is 24 centimeter. But that is from Q2, people. This y has been taken from Q2. So how far is it from Q1? So 16 plus 24 that is going to be 40 so distance of point b is 40 centimeter from q1 this is your answer so there are two points one point a which is 10 centimeter from q1 this was somewhere like here point a which was 10 centimeter from q1 and the other is point B, which is 16 plus 24, that's 40 centimeter from Q1. This is your numerical number one. So, if at all you are asked potential, then you might have to consider more than one point. Whereas, if you are looking at field or force, there will only be one point where the field or force will be zero. So, this is the classic difference between force field and potential the next is numerical 2.2 numerical 2.2 tells us about a hexagon it's a regular hexagon 10 centimeter each side and 5 micro coulomb at each vertex okay what have they asked us calculate the potential at the center v at the center that is what has been asked so let us draw a regular hexagon. I am sure everyone knows what a regular hexagon looks like. This is somewhere near the classic idea of a regular hexagon. So I just rotated the book <laughs> on a video. <laughs> okay. A, B, C, D, E and F. And there are charges, let us say QQ all the way around. Now the beauty about a regular hexagon, this is 10 centimeter, 10 centimeter each side. The beauty about a regular hexagon is that this is 60, this is also 60. And because of that, this is 10, this is also 10, this is also 10. So... The distance of each vertex from the center is 10 centimeter. So for a regular hexagon, distance of center from each vertex is equal to the length of each side wow so we got 10 centimeter okay now how many charges contribute to the potential at O? there are six one two three four five and six so potential at the center 
potential at the center is V O is V due to A plus V due to B C D E and F and since they are all K Q by R K Q by R all are K Q by R because all Q are same the distance also from each vertex is same thus K Q by R how many times six times so this is six K Q by R I am sure you never saw something easier charge five micro and distance 10 centi that's 10 into 10 is to minus 2 that's 10 is to minus 1 so 6 5s are is 30 and 30 into 9 is 270 9 minus 6 is 3 3 and 1 is 4 so uh, the net potential at O is 2.7 into 10 raised to 6 volt this is the potential at the center of a regular hexagon then we go to numerical 2.3 which says there are two charges 2 micro coulomb and minus 2 micro coulomb and they are placed at points A and B 6 centimeter apart. You have to identify an equipotential surface. Okay, let us first look at this. This is a dipole I'm sure you remember a dipole when you see one this is six centimeter now do you agree that you know the dipole for a dipole uh, equipotential surface will have to be such a surface where the potential is going to be zero let me first consider a point here let us call this point a at point a what is the net potential? Net electric potential is, isn't it V1 plus V2? And this is 2 micro, this is minus 2 micro, distance is same. So the net potential is 0. So if I were to look at a point A, then the potential is 0. And if I were to draw an imaginary surface at point A showing like this, then do you agree at every point on this surface, the potential will be zero so for an imaginary plane passing through point A and perpendicular now let's call this A and B okay this A and B to uh, sorry bad bad decision this is PQ have they called it A and B? Yeah, they have called it A and B. So this point is going to be P. We are sorry. Uh, this is point P. Already A is something else. So passing through point P and perpendicular to line AB, the potential at every point is 0. So since all points passing through this plane have the same potential this can be an equipotential surface so this surface acts as an equipotential surface so the first question was identify an equipotential surface we identified this plane this plane which is perpendicular to line AB as an equipotential surface the second question is what is the direction of every electric field at every point on the equipotential surface so as easy as it sounds the direction of electric field on an equipotential surface I hope you remember electric field is always perpendicular to the equipotential surface on an equipotential surface is always perpendicular to the surface so here do you agree perpendicular to this plane would mean in this direction or this direction so perpendicular to the plane so here the direction of E bar will be 
parallel to the line AB containing both the charges. So the second question also stands solved wherein we understand that the electric field will be parallel to the line AB which contains both the charges. So the electric field might be like this or it might be like this whatever be the case but usually it is like this. So electric field will be perpendicular to the equipotential surface. I might as well show you this. So it might be uh, you know in this direction or it might be in this direction wherever you know you find it electric field will be perpendicular. So this is numerical 2.3. Let's go on. Let's look at numerical 2.4. Lovely numericals this in the textbook. Uh, they say for numerical 4 there is a spherical conductor of radius 12 centimeter and which has a charge 1.6 into 10 raised to minus 7 coulomb distributed uniformly on its surface. Uh, now the, there are three questions. First, what is the electric field inside the sphere E inside? Now, yes, charge is distributed on the surface. So this is a hollow sphere and for a hollow sphere the electric field at any point inside will be zero as charge is distributed on the surface. So there is no electric field inside the shell or the conductor. So E inside is zero. The second question that they have asked us, what is the electric field just outside? That means nearly on the surface, just outside the sphere. So that means the electric field on its surface. Well, I hope you remember E on the surface, KQ by R square. We've got everything. We've got everything running. How much is Q? I think it's 1.7 into 10 raised to minus uh, 1.6 into 10 raised to minus 7 coulomb and radius is 12 centi. So that's uh, 1.2 into 10 raised to minus 1 the whole square. Well, I always deem this to be a numerical of chapter 1. Uh, why have they asked it in uh, chapter 2? Only they know. We do not know. 1.2 ka square is 1.44 and that's 10 is to minus 2. So a quick calculation would give you uh, 2 and 2 is 4. And how much is uh, 9 into 1.6? That's 14.4 by 1.44 is 10. 10 into 10 raised to 2 is 10 raised to 3. 3 and 2 is 5. So electric field on the surface is 10 raised to 5 newton per coulomb but that's not the end of solomon grundy there's a third question also what is the electric field at a point 18 centimeter from the center of the surface okay third electric field outside at 18 centimeter from the center so electric field outside e outside a beautiful celebrated equation kq by small r square remember this r will be 18 centimeter i hope it's not from the surface yeah from the center so k 9 into 10 raised to 9 q 1.6 10 raised to minus 7 and r is 18 so 1.8 into 10 raised to minus 1 the whole square now let's get rolling 1.8 ka square that's 3.24 into 10 raised to minus 2 so 14.4 divided by 3.24 that is nearly 4.44 or you can call it 4.4 or something like that. So this is how it will look 4.4 nearly. So 4.4 uh, 9 into 1.6 14.4 to 10 raised to 4 Newton per Coulomb. So this is E outside. This settles the question for numerical 4. 
Now we go on to additional exercises. Additionals are a little tricky but based on the same idea as usual. So we will have to go on to additional and in order to go to additional we will have to look at additional first. So, so the first additional sum is that it is numerical number 2.12 and what does it say? It says that a charge of 8 milli coulomb is located at the origin and uh, uh, we look at the work done. We need to find the work done in taking a small charge Q is minus 2 into 10 raised to minus 9 coulomb from the point P which is 003 centimeter to a point Q which is 040 centimeter via uh, 069 via point R which is 069 centimeter okay so 8 milli coulomb is out here now let's let's draw a brief diagram Uh, let us call this uh, x, y and z axis. Let's denote them. Uh, P is 0, 0, 003. Let's call this x. This is y. This is z. So the charge is here at P which is 0, 0, 003. And from there we need to bring it to Q which is on the y axis 0, 4, 0. Why any other point R? That R is in the Y, Z plane. You know somewhere here. You don't know. You might you want to put R somewhere here. Let's put it R. Okay. You are happy? Okay. So am I. So you want to take a small charge. This small e Q from P to Q. Now work done. How much is the work done? One simple equation changes it for all times. It is change in potential energy. And what is change in potential energy? It is small q times change in electric potential. That means q into what is the potential difference? That would be the potential at point q minus potential at point p. So work done is Q times potential at point, what was the final point? Q. Potential at point Q minus potential at point P. So our first agenda is to find the potentials at Q and P. So at point Q. Okay. What is the V at Q? Well, I think everybody knows uh, potential at any point due to a charge is KQ by R. So KQ by R. Now, how much is the distance of point charge Q from point Q? Uh, this is charge. This is charge Q. Okay. And this is point Q. I don't know why they denoted as QQ. They could have taken anything else also. It is 4 centimeter. So do not forget that this is centimeter. So K 9 into 10 raised to 9. How much is this big charge Q? It's 8 milli coulomb. And what is the distance I said? 4 centimeter. So let's not be 2 centi. Uh, 8 by 4 is 2. 9 2 zar is 18. 9 minus 3 is 6. 6 and 2 is 8. And at point P. V at P. Another celebrated equation. K Q by R. No, no doubt at all. And before we put R, we will have to see how far is charge Q from P. How far is charge Q from point P? 3 centi. More lovely. So, 3, 3 eights are is 24 into 9 minus 3 is 6, 6 and 2 is 8. So, thus, everything is set. Work done. How much is your small charge Q? How much is your small charge Q? Minus 2 into 10 is to minus 9. We are not interested in signs, so we might as well, you know, ditch them. And uh, 10 raised to 8 is common. Do not forget that. 
and VQ, VQ, VQ 18 minus 24. We are only looking at magnitude, so stay focused. 18 minus 24 is minus 6. Minus 6 into minus 2 is 12. Hey, 6 into 2 is 12, absolutely. And minus 9 plus 8 is minus 1. So the work done is 1.2 joule. This is a very lovely idea. And there's a second question they have asked. No, they have not asked any question. So this is the work that is required. And if somebody asks you that you were supposed to take this charge from here via this point here. So if it would be the path would be something like this. Tuck, 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 tuck. And from there, tuck, 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 tuck. So R to kahi figure nahi kiya yaar. Kahi bhi aapne R figure nahi hua. Because I am sure everybody knows that electric field is a conservative field that means the work done in an electric field will not depend on the path taken but it will depend only on the initial and the final positions not on path you may go like this you may go like this you may go like this but it will not depend on path taken it will depend only on initial and the final points so this is how the cookie crumbles this was numerical 12 we are going on to numerical number 13 and in numerical number 13 there is a cube wow we love a cube uh, each side b and there is a charge q at each vertex i guess i hate guessing let me look at it yes each vertex determine the potential and field due to this charge at the center so find potential and field at the center uh, let me draw a beautiful cube uh, i'm sure everyone knows a cube i'm really bad at drawing cubes but this is what a cube typically looks like and i had to draw it I have to show you. So this is a cube. This is a center. Uh, let us call this A, B, C, D, E, F, G and H. Charge is Q at every point. Before I actually go on and find field and potential, let me show you this midpoint. Oh, do you agree this midpoint is the center of the body diagonal of this cube this body diagonal is like a g okay if you see you know two end points of a room you know two diagonally opposite points how far achha, this is each side is b <clears throat> how what is the length of the body diagonal now first things first the length of the body diagonal is the pythagorean hypotenuse of one of the sides let us call it cg and the face diagonal ac so, distance, uh, let us say, uh, length of AG. So, by Pythagoras theorem, well, I think you did this in class 9th or something. AG square is AC square plus CG square. I hope, I'm sure you're looking. AG square is a c square a c square would be like this if i were to show you this is your a c a c square plus c g square it is this line okay so a little imagination will do the trick now how much is a c isn't it the hypotenuse of a b and b c this is b this is b so this is b root 2 so this is b root 2 and this is v let me write it here itself this is b root 2 the whole square and b square b root 2 the whole square is 2b square 2b square plus b square not surprisingly 3b square so finally taking root ag is b root 3 but this is not the end we are not interested in ag as such we are interested in ao ao which is half ag so distance of point o 
from each vertex AO is AG by 2 that is B root 3 by 2 let me make this as a statement the distance of the center of the cube from each vertex is b root 3 by 2 you can take it as a working principle also and now finally electric field at the center ladies and gentlemen if you look at this these are all positive charges and they will all contribute and thus tongue 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 the net will be zero so at center o will be zero as all field vectors are in mutually opposite directions so be it a square or be it a cube the net electric field at the center has to be zero ha huh. There have to be same charges at every point only then it will be zero and now electric potential ladies and gentlemen at center o by potential is not zero huh? mind well v o is v due to a plus v due to b i think we saw this some time back c d e f how many they are till h so v b v c v d v e v f v g v h all k q by r k q by r how many times? 8 times. So it is 8 kq by r. Now is the time to put the values. They want it in terms of epsilon 0 and stuff. So k is 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0. This comes q here. And how much is r? b root 3 by 2. So b root 3 and 2 goes up. So what are we left with? 2, 2 twos are 4, 4 q by pi epsilon 0 b root 3. Ladies and gentlemen, a very lovely idea. So, potential at the center O is 4 q by pi epsilon 0 b root 3. I guess this numerical was basically meant to show you this one significant point where the distance of the center of the cube from each vertex is b root 3 length into root 3 by 2 and electric field will be 0 and electric potential is non-zero this was numerical number 13 for you let us go on looking at number 14 again a very wonderful sum numerical 14 tiny spheres carrying 1.5 micro and 2.5 micro so q1 is 1.5 micro and Q2 is 2.5 microcoulomb and they are 30 centimeter away okay uh, find the potential and electric field and find E and V at first midpoint of the line joining the two charges midpoint of the line Okay, we'll start. Uh, this is my you have two spheres. Okay, okay, two tiny spheres. No issues. Tiny means not very big. This is one. Let's call it. This is two. Okay, this has got charge Q one. This has got charge Q two, and this is the midpoint. How far they are? Thirty centimeter. Okay. And let us call this this point as uh, P, let us say, okay. And it is 15 centimeter. Now, first electric field, okay. Both are positively charged. So, due to Q1, electric field at P, do you agree, will be outwards? We will call it E1. And due to 2, electric field again outwards, we will call it e2 so do you agree net electric field since q2 is bigger will be e2 minus e1 so net field at p net electric field at p is this is e2 minus e1 
वेल आई स्टिल होप यू रिमेम्बर दी फॉर्मूले फॉर इलेक्ट्रिक फील्ड के क्यू बाय आर स्क्वेर तो दिस इज के क्यू वन बाय आर स्क्वेर सिंस आर इज सेम फॉर बोथ फिफ्टीन फिफ्टीन सेंटी फॉर ईच के क्यू टू रादर एंड दिस इज के क्यू वन बाय आर स्क्वेर आई थिंक लेट इज नॉट क्राई ओवर स्पिल्ट मिल्क Q1 and Q2 both 1.5 and 2.5 micro. Let's take it out. Over and this inside 2.5 minus 1.5. Lovely numbers they have chosen for us. And R is 15 centi. That's 1.5 into 10 raised to minus 1 ka square. Okay, so what are we going to look at? 9 into 10 raised to 3. 2.5 minus 1.5 is 1. And 1.5 squared. Is two point two five, and this ten raised to minus two. Now two point two five fours are that's nine. So E is four into ten raised to five newton per coulomb, and pointing towards Q one. So towards, do not forget that also Q one. This is your electric field, and now net potential. Net Electric potential at P. We simply know it is a scalar sum, sir. V one plus V two, no minusing stuff. K Q one by R plus K Q two by R. So K comes common nine into ten raised to nine, ten raised to minus six. Milan hoga yahan pe two point five plus one point five. Sorry, I should have written one point five plus two point five. I'm sure you'll forgive me for that clerical error. Uh, two point five plus one point five is four, and nine four zar is thirty six. So this is thirty six into nine minus six is three, over one point five into ten raised to minus one. Now thirty six divided by one point five, it would have been something around twenty four. So twenty four into ten raised to four, or rather two point four into ten raised to five. So V P is two point four into ten raised to five volt. Iska koi direction nahi hota. So please don't write towards this thing or towards this thing. It has no direction. Now the first part got over. Second part. Second part is a bit technical. So please pay attention. The second part is that at a point they have to find potential and electric field at a point ten centimeter. From the midpoint in a plane normal to the line and passing through the midpoint. Oh, ten centimeter from the midpoint perpendicular to the plane of the midpoint. So sir, how will it look? Don't worry, how will it look? Good, it will look good. This is Q1, this is Q2, this is line. Are both of them in the middle? और कहीं ये परपेंडिकुलर है पासिंग थ्रू दिस मिड पॉइंट मिड पॉइंट का नाम क्या दिया था हमने पी 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 एंड दिस इज योर पॉइंट लेट एस कॉल इट एस यहां से टेन सेंटी भाई ये फिफ्टीन है ये फिफ्टीन है ओके सो फर्स्ट थिंग्स फर्स्ट ये लाइंस मार दी मैंने ओके लेट एस फर्स्ट फाइंड Uh, let us call these a, b. Uh, this is fifteen. This is ten. How much will be a s? So by Pythagoras theorem, a s square is a p square plus p s square. So this is fifteen square plus ten square. That's two twenty five plus hundred. That's three twenty five. Oh, by three twenty four is the root of uh, square of eighteen. So A S, which is same as B S, is eighteen centimeter. B S stands for this distance, nothing else. So don't get excited. Does not stand for anything else. So A S and B S are both eighteen centimeter. Let's first find potential. Potential will be as easy as they come. Electric potential. At point S, V S is V one plus V two. Oh, K Q one by R plus K Q two by R. 
if you look closely q1 and q2 are both equidistant from s which is 18 centimeter so again the same treatment will work good 9 into 10 raised to 9 10 is to minus 6 common and this is 18 centimeter 2.5 again i wrote 2.5 so i love 2.5 i don't know why so 9 into 4 into 10 raised to 3 over 18 into 10 raised to minus 2 36 by 18 anyone can do that is 2 into 10 raised to 5 volt but what is going to be breathtaking is electric field people i will want your absolute attention here so from q1 what will be the direction of electric field at point s do you agree it will venture outside so i should have drawn this figure a bit on the lower side so this would have been e1 and from b do you agree b also goes out wow this is e2 so and this is the angle between them or you can call it this is the angle this is theta this is also theta so this is 2 theta okay so let's go on let's find out e1 and e2 first for electric field let us not be too hasty you know additional exercises have a way of you know making use of a number of concepts so you have to be really patient k q1 by r square so k 9 into 10 raised to 9 q1 is how much is q1 1.5 right 1.5 this sum has been going on forever 1.5 micro and r is like 18 okay 1.8 into 10 raised to minus 1 squared 9 into 1.5 is 13.5 into 10 raised to 3 over 3.24 into 10 raised to minus 2 and let's find out how much is 13.5 divided by 3.24 that's around 4.16 so around 4.2 you can write 4.2 into 10 raised to 5 newton per coulomb and in a similar vein we will find e2 also k q2 by r square k 9 into 10 raised to 9 q2 and again the same treatment 9 into 2.5 that would be uh, around 22.5 would it be yeah 22.5 into 9 minus 6 is 3 and this is 3.24 no guesses so 22.5 divided by 3.24 is nearly 6.9 we can call it 7 7 into 10 raised to 5 newton per coulomb but this these are just e1 and e2 this is not the resultant because for resultant you will have to find theta also so if you are looking at theta uh, how much how much would be uh, sine theta it would be opposite over hypotenuse so you can say sine theta is 15 by 18 and by using calculative methods you can find out the value of theta and once you find out theta you can put uh, 2 theta here and I am sure you know in vectors parallelogram method the net resultant electric field E is root of E1 square plus E2 square plus 2 E1 E2 cos of the angle between both of them. So let's do this. Uh, let's find out sine theta first. Sine theta is opposite over hypotenuse 15 by 18. From the figure, sine theta is opposite over I don't need to write this you are better than this that's 15 by 18 and 15 by 18 is nearly 0.83 and theta will be sine inverse 0.83 and uh, how much is sine inverse 0.83 uh, let me say nearly how much is sine 60 that's 0.866 so this is lesser than 60 uh, more on around uh, 55 or something like that maybe sine 55 will work out 
you can uh, look at it uh, i do not have a lock table right now nearly 55s somewhere around so how much is your 2 theta 2 theta is twice 55 around and that is nearly 110 and you can use your better idea and the resultant you can find out cos 2 theta also which is let us say cos 110 sir how do we find cos 110 you don't need to find cos 110 it is cos 90 plus 20 cos 90 plus theta is minus sin theta so if you know in the second quadrant only sine is positive cosine is negative so you can put this value uh, you can put this value and finally the resultant electric field E square is E1 square plus E2 square plus 2E1 E2 cos 2 theta I think the time has come for you to put in the values you put in the values you find me the answer i'll give you the values e1 is 4.2 into 10 raised to 5 squared i know this is 7 into 10 raised to 5 squared and remember cos 2 theta was minus sine uh, 20 so minus comes here so twice 4.2 into 10 raised to 5 7 into 10 raised to 5 and sine 20 i think sine 20 is 0.34 or something like that if i'm not mistaken uh, sine 30 is 0.5 so it is 0 0.3420 you can put this value and you can find out the answer for me uh, the answer as given in the textbook is uh, nearly i don't know i've never seen the answer in the textbook you can look at the answer in the textbook and you can find out what exactly the answer would be the answer as given in the textbook 2.14 is 6.6 .6 into 10 raised to 5 which will nearly work out into 10 raised to 5 newton per coulomb and if you wish to find out the angle then you might also find out the angle uh, you know the angle that the resultant would make you know resultant e1 square and e2 square ka resultant is making an angle let us say alpha with this and tan alpha would be opposite over adjacent that that would be e2 by e1 so angle made by resultant field with e1 is tan alpha is e2 by e1 and e2 you know 7 into 10 is to 5 this is 4.2 so 7 divide by 4.2 is 1.66 and 1.66 is nearly 1.7 and uh, you know around something like that you can find out and alpha will be your answer but this is made with e1 don't forget that they have given the angle with the line joining so they want the angle with this so you might as well you know take it with this doesn't make any difference this is an additional exercise so the finally angle uh, made by e bar angle is 69 degree with the line a b joining both the charges so that is how the cookie will crumble do this for homework let's go on i think there is a couple of numericals left we were looking at uh, 2.14 uh, and now we are looking at 2.20 2.20 and finally 2.22 i think those were the last ones let's go back and let's find out 2.20 and 2.22 was it 2.20 22 and 36 there were three more so 20 numerical 20 now numerical 20 is a wonderful numerical where they say that there are two conducting spheres uh, A and B are connected to each other by the wire so let us say this is A this is B and they are connected by a wire and they need you to find the ratio of electric fields electric field on A 
by electric field on B. And let's first do that. I'm sure you know. Let us call this to be QA. Let us call this to be QB. So when they are connected by a wire, you know the charge flows from one to another till potentials become same. So the potentials on the surfaces become equal. So V on A is equal to V on B. So K Q A by A is K Q B by B, which leaves me with Q A by Q B is A by B. But we are not only in interested in this, we are interested in finding surface densities also. Why? Let me tell you. Let me first find surface charge density. Surface charge density. I'm sure you know sigma is charge upon area which is Q over 4 pi radius squared. So on A, what will be the surface charge density? Sigma A is QA by 4 pi A squared. And if you substitute QA here, how much is QA? Uh, you know, QA you can find out QB also. Sigma B is QB over 4 pi B squared. Let me divide both of them. So Sigma A by Sigma B. QA by QB into 4 pi 4 pi goes away. This is B square by A square. Do not forget. What was QA by QB? A by B. So A by B into B square by A square. Let's cut one of them. So what are we left with? Sigma A by Sigma B is B by A. Wow. Why have we found this? Because electric field on the surface, I'm sure you still remember, E on the surface is simply sigma by epsilon 0. Wow. So electric field on A is sigma A by epsilon 0. Electric field on B is sigma B by epsilon 0. So taking the ratio EA by EB, it is sigma A by sigma B. How much is sigma A by sigma B people? B by A. Wow. This is what is called a cocker. We have used one and we have obtained two. Now, the second question that they ask is that use the result to explain why the charge density on sharp ends is higher than on the flatter ends. So, can you see from equation one, <coughs> sigma A is inversely proportional to radius. So sigma is inversely proportional to radius. So more is radius less is surface charge density. Thus on pointed ends you know on pointed ends radius will be very small so sigma becomes very high on pointed ends radius is small so surface charge density will be higher so this is the logical idea and you know this is the same reason that you know on on top of big buildings you have you know suppose this is a building so you have a long rod and it has got pointed ends. This is what is called a lightning rod or lightning conductor. If you might have seen all lightning will get attracted at this pointed end because it is at this pointed end that will have large surface charge density. So all lightning will get attracted here and it will fall here. And from here it goes down and inside the ground there is a large disc, metallic disc. This is called earth thing. So all the energy is, you know, gone inside the earth and it will not disturb the building or the electrical appliances of this beautiful building. So this, that is why lightning conductors 
have pointed spikes you know three charged pointed spikes so they can attract the lightning and they can conduct it safely to the earth this was the idea of this numerical and i think uh, let us let us keep some numericals for the next session uh, we can do numerical 22 and numerical uh, 36 in the next session till then thank you so much have a wonderful evening bye bye